Hi, Martin Turner here. Welcome to our class on Going Forward. We first look at what this unit has been about and discuss aspects of learning for understanding. We see that a key tag out for us in our unit is about how we can use accounting numbers to connect to what is going on in a business. We then discuss your questions and we look at the great video, it's now up to you. First, let's look at what our unit has been about. Hi, Martin Turner here, and welcome to the week 12 lecture for Act 13017 Financial Statement Analysis. This week we're looking at going forward, our last week of the term. A past student has said, this accounting unit has offered me the opportunity to not regurgitate black and white, an white answers and to suggest answers based on my own proper judgment. There is no other explanation. I love it. I love having no definitive answers. Such is the subjectivity of the real world. So some people have been enjoying the subjectivity of, the, of analyzing their firms and the reliance on judgment based on reasons. As I get to the last two weeks of my university degree, I feel like this unit is becoming the be all and end all to my degree. I couldn't wish for a better capstone unit to round off my undergraduate tertiary education. I feel like I have intellectually moved to a different level of critical thinking without even really noticing until now, obviously. I felt more confident with this assignment than any of the others. I don't know why this is. I tried my best to back everything up with reasonable explanations, but my feedback has told me to. So some people have also, um, this is a past student, but some people over the years have developed intellectually in the unit, have felt that they've increased their ability to think and solve problems. So what are we about today? Well, we're going to look at what this unit has been about. And we'll have a look at learning for understanding. And then we'll have a look at what you can do going forward based on what you may have learned in this unit. Now, the unit learning outcomes for our unit are in the unit profile. And to what extent do the unit learning outcomes reflect or not reflect your experience of learning in this unit? So it can be a time just to reflect on what you may have learned or not learned um, while studying this unit. The unit learning outcomes in the unit profile say on successful completion of this unit, you will be able to apply established techniques for analyzing financial statement information for forecasting, valuation and risk analysis purposes. So we've been looking at the DCF and economic profit um, techniques for analysing financial statements and a range of detail within that. And you've had the opportunity to apply that to your firm. And apply the major concepts and theories of fundamental analysis and the key steps involved in conducting the fundamental analysis and valuation of a company. So applying, again, major concepts and theories of fundamental analysis that we've looked at. Does that reflect your learning as well? Have you um, been able to do that and, um, and see the key steps involved in analysing the firm and valuing? And use financial statement information to identify and recommend solutions to various financial challenges. This is what accounting is about. It's about using the accounting information, we're using the financial statements to identify and recommend solutions to various financial challenges, solving problems, giving advice. So even though we're looking at the specific issue of valuing our firms, um, we're using the financial information to connect to what's really going on in our firms, which requires our judgments. And then that's the core of being able to give advice as accountants. Analyze and synthesize a firm's financial statement information in the context of the firm's economic and business condition. 
to make informed recommendations on investment decisions about the firm. So how do you feel you've gone about developing your ability to analyse your firm's financial statements, synthesise them, let me put them together. We've been analysing, breaking them up, but then towards the end as we value our firms and forecasts, we put it together again. We synthesise a firm's financial, financial information in the context of its economic and business realities. And so then we can then decide whether we consider, you know, given the current share price of our firm, whether it would be a good investment to buy, alternatively to sell or perhaps hold the investment. So the end of it, every unit you do and the end of this unit is a good time to reflect on how well, um, you know, to what extent the unit learning outcomes reflect your experience of learning in the unit. And when you're at the end of your degree, you can be thinking about how your learning has gone for your whole degree as well. Now, in this unit, we, we're looking at learning and the design of the unit has been around this model where the four blue boxes, aspects of how we learn, relevant structure, conception of learning, motivation and approach to learning. Motivation, intrinsic or intrinsic. Have you been become interested in aspects of the unit or have you just been getting through the assessments and just doing that stuff in order to get a mark? Or have you been uh, interested and curious about your firm and, and understanding how you can better engage with a business through counting figures? Approach to learning, surface or deep? A number of people have been have had a different feeling about the way they've learned than perhaps they often do in formal environments. Has that been your case or have you been just going through skimming across the surface and not really getting into um, in any depth some of the concepts we've been studying? And we looked at conception of learning in the unit and um, whether you're learning um, just to have a quantitative increase in knowledge, just a few facts and figures you throw in the backpack, or whether you've been seeking to understand what we've been learning and seeking to apply it and to, uh, and as you do that, to change the way you view aspects of the world, say aspects of business, and also change as a person. And relevant structure. This is this is your reason for doing, doing the unit, for doing the learning tasks in the unit. And uh, is it been something that, uh, the, uh, that has been to, uh, to just get some marks or has it been through also does it make sense in terms of, you know, your developing your personal capabilities? And then assessment, teamwork, instruction and teacher-student relationship have been four groups of interventions, if you like, that are in the unit. And as you work through the assessed learning tasks, they had the opportunity to work with other people in the unit. Some people are doing that online, some face-to-face. Uh, instruction, where the um, a lot of the content has been in the study guide and in videos, and uh, the teacher-student relationship, where we've been supporting you to think for yourself and come up with some of your own judgments rather than simply just regurgitate <laughs> what the lecturer says. And this whole sort of picture, seeking to support you to experience learning for real in, in the context of this unit, and learning for understanding and helping you, you know, uh, demonstrate in your critical thinking skills. These are critical skills that people are looking for from graduates. The ability to give advice, the ability to make judgments, the ability to think about, listen and think about issues that a client might have or, or if you're valuing a firm and coming up with some judgments. So that's a sort of uh, theoretical framework in our unit. I believe I have a fairly good understanding of my firm now. So you've had a, most people have had a good chance to look at their firm. Do you feel you've got a good understanding of your firm now or, or not? I remember in assignment one, I'd never heard of my firm. That's true for a number of people, never heard of them. Some people, yes, they'd heard of them, but many not. But now it seems as if it is a part of my knowledge and experience. So do you sort of feel like, you know, the, your firm is part of your life? Uh, I do feel that way with some of the investments I've made over, over the years, including Ryman Healthcare and, 
uh, is it a part of my knowledge and experience? When grocery shopping, I try to mystery shop. It's the idea of, of you know, having a look and, and assessing businesses by turning up. I try to mystery shop and point out to my parents which brands are owned by my firm. This makes grocery shopping a bit more interesting. I also find even out of lecture times, myself and other students are always discussing our firms and recent news events that could impact it. So sometimes people are buying their, their <laughs> talk about their firms a lot with each other. And this is amazing, not what I expected from studying this unit. For those who have been experiencing that in terms of their own firm, becoming curious about it, uh, discussing it with other people, has that been your experience or, or not? This whole process has enthused me and is continually making me think and connect everything that is going on in the world with my firm. So this idea that we've been connecting our accounting, our firm's accounts to its actual economic and business realities, and then other people connecting their firm to just things that are going on. So if your firm is involved in a certain industry and you're thinking about how it might be being impacted by that or by various economic and, and uh, political changes. I even talked about my firm in a job interview I had on Friday. And this student, they, their firm came up in their job interview. I did get a groan when I mentioned what company I was analysing. It appears one of my interviewers had done some work for them and was not impressed with the current state of its operations. So as you've been using real firms, and uh, you can come across in a job interview, you can mention it, and somebody might have had some dealings with a firm. Or the firms are real firms, they're doing real things on an ongoing basis every day, just as Ryman Healthcare is. So have you been enthused by this, or have you just got exhausted at the end of your degree and just hoping it comes to an end? Have you been thinking and connecting what's going on in your firm with the real world? Reading chapter six rekindled memories of studying my previous unit lecture notes. Both readings talked about the same thing, effects of financial leverage, but the feeling I have while reading it now differs from what I felt while reading it for my previous unit. Perhaps the focus is different. My focus in my previous unit was to successfully regurgitate an exam, <laughs> and in time just to memorize it, reproduce and forget where my focus now is to learn it. So what has been your focus in our unit? Has it just been to get through? There's no exam, so you don't need to regurgitate things for an exam, but I've just been wanting to put things into the assignment and regurgitate things, put them in there and move on. Or has my focus been on learning? The ability to learn and to really engage with new material and new ideas. It's an important skill for any profession, including accounting. It is funny, in past papers, I would have superficially read the chapter with a base understanding of information, but not really understanding and engaging with the information. So this student said they would, you know, they'd have a bit of a read superficially of the readings in their unit. A lot of people don't even read the readings at all. But they just and they get a bit of an understanding of it, but not really understanding or engaging with the information, thinking about it, thinking about how it might connect to the real world or to my own life. With this reading and all the other readings, I found it just as difficult as other units. But the difference is I've been intrinsically driven to understand the information. So this student was saying that intrinsically, they are wanting to understand this stuff. They're wanting to get into it. Instead of switching onto autopilot, I'm reading them, I'm just ticking over the pages of the reading. I'm fully focused and intent on understanding everything that meets the eye. So you mean that seeking to understand the concepts that you've been studying or have you been sort of on autopilot getting through it? I can't remember the last time that I was this motivated for a unit, let alone the counting units. So have you been motivated? Has it been an, in, an a, a, a extrinsic motivation or an intrinsic motivation? In any profession activities, well, in anything you want to get good at, you need to have a motivation yourself. It needs to come from within. And, and it's really your connection to the, in this case, the learning tasks 
to the actual tasks. And uh, is it just motivating to do that? Are you interested in the businesses you've been looking at in your own firm and others or not? I can't remember the last time that I was this motivated for a unit, let alone an accounting unit. Now, this is what university is about. You've, most people are finishing up at university this term or, or this year. University is not about just being busy and sort of getting through assessments, getting grades, hopefully good grades, getting a job. All these things are important, but it's not fundamentally what university is about. University is about intellectual development, about how we think. Most people, almost everyone, in fact, most people go into uni to start with thinking that there, there are some right answers. There's black and white, clear-cut answers. I'm going to uni to find out what they are in the discipline I'm studying. And I'll get them from the lecturers, I'll get them from textbooks, so that's where they'll be. So that's, that's how you can think. Clear-cut black and white answers. A lot of people, by the time they come to the end of uni, and for you, this may well be you know, you're at the end of uni, so you can see whether this is true for you. A lot of people at the end of uni have moved on to thinking that there are no right answers, that it's all relative, that accounting is a game, you know, that this, so you've gone from clear cut black and white answers, now it's all just relative. So you might be thinking that there are no right answers, that it's all relative, it just depends, you know, you can just, what can you get away with? You're not really trying to use accounting to connect to a business, but perhaps just to tell some stories. Or you might have moved back. But the idea is you do, you do need to go to that point. You need to get away from thinking there are clear-cut black and white answers to everything because the world's full of shades of grey in the real world. So you sort of got to move through that idea that there are no right answers, that it's relative, but it's not good to end up there. Where you need to get to in university is is an intellectual development, a way of thinking of having personal commitments based on evidence. I think this is true for these reasons. This is my, and if you're going to get, be successful in professional activities, and <laughs> people who are successful, they have some views about key issues in their discipline. And they think they're true for these reasons. And they're very happy to talk to other people who might have some alternative views, different views on that. and 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 their reasons for it and discuss the reasons and think about it more. Personal commitments based on evidence. This is a completely different way of thinking to thinking that there are right answers, clear cut black and white answers, which come from some authority or source and also very different to there being no right answers. Personal commitments based on evidence. Have you developed intellectually at university? Some people do experience that, but a lot don't. A lot just end up thinking, no, it's just uh, relative in my discipline. It thinks relative. And how are you feeling at the end of your degree? Some people feel unwilling to finish this journey yet. Some people. Highly appreciate you to be with us during this journey. That's a journey of this unit. I really learn a lot from you. It is hard to describe my feelings so far. I really am willing to finish this journey yet. So some people are feeling sad at the end. They've, they've, been, they've been on a journey here. They want to keep going a bit more, not quite ready to finish. So somebody might that, or you might be feeling, yes, I'm very ready to finish, <laughs> finish my degree and move on to the next stages. But some people are feeling like that. They've been really learning a lot and they've been enjoying that experience. Real learning is enjoyable. It might be tough, it might be difficult, it might be challenging, but it's sort of fun. So this is the structure that we have in terms of supporting learning in this unit, supporting people to experience high level relevant structures, focus more on personal development rather than on simply sort of getting a job or even getting good at doing a job rather than developing into, which are all sort of surface learning type things, just get facts and figures into developing the personal qualities and capabilities that you might need in a job. I got really great marks when I was at uni as a student, but from the day I started working full-time, left uni and worked full-time, no one has ever asked me what my grades are. Not a person. What are they interested in? They're interested in my personal qualities and what I can do. The relevant structure is where, how you, where you, uh, 
what's the relevance to you of these various learning tasks that we've been doing in the unit? And uh, have they just been things to tick off to get a job? Or perhaps they may help you do a job, perhaps. Or are they helping you develop the personal ca capabilities and becoming a person, becoming a professional accountant? Conception of learning is what we think learning is. What do you think learning is? And uh, if do you think learning is a quantitative increase in knowledge? Let's do it efficiently. Let's just pile the stuff in the backpack. There's a few problems. One is we often can't remember most of it. And we've done a lot of content in this unit. How much of it do you remember even now at the end of the term? And so do we conceive learning as just being that? Or is it more than that? Is it applying it to the real world, uh, like the workplace? Some people will think that too. And uh, quite a few people, most people thought it was one of those two things. Um, and that's all about these clear-cut facts and you just need to learn them. And uh, you get them from some sort of expert and you want to do it efficiently. Or do I want to put in the mental effort to understand it for myself, to change the way I view some aspects of the world based on the concepts I've been studying and to change the person? Learning changes us <laughs> in some ways, maybe good or bad. It changes us as people and hopefully in useful, valuable ways. Then motivation, internal or external. Some people have felt that at times at least, have felt that internal motivation, that curiosity, that desire to do the learning tasks in and of themselves. Or have you just only sort of had the external motivation? And the approach to learning, have you been experiencing just the surface learning, just quantitative increase in knowledge things, where you're just sort of skimming over the top? You don't really got into the, the concepts very much. Has that been your experience for your whole degree? Or has it also been where you've been learning deeply, where you've been understanding material in this unit and through your degree, and to be really taking it on board and having it become part of you? And so all of this sort of approach with the, in, with the assessments, we've had these assessed learning tasks. The assessments have been the learning tasks. They've been, well, we're assessing a lot of the learning tasks anyway in the unit, and obviously there's we don't assess everything, but the, the learning tasks, the assessments are learning tasks, and uh, they're not something separate to that. Teamwork, you've had the opportunity to connect to other people online, face-to-face, there's been some people formed some, there's been a number of study teams formed in the unit, for example. Teacher-student relationship. I've tried not to just give you answers, but to help you think about it. And, and you can have, form a range of judgments about the various things we've learned. And instruction, where we've been learning, a lot of the content's been in the study guide and in the um, in very short videos, and where the classes have been designed more to be interactive and discuss. And the uh, and so that's the picture. And so how do, you, how do you feel you've made some progress? Do you feel you're demonstrating some critical thinking? Or when you get to analysing your firm and forecasting and making judgments, you're just feeling like it's too difficult, that your brain just can't push through. It just wants to be told the answers rather than to figure it out. So whereas other people have moved much more into being able to think and, and say what they think for these reasons. Doesn't mean you're correct, but it means you've got some, are they convincing? Is it something that might be likely? Now, as we get to the end of our unit and end of our degree, we can, we should take some time to reflect on what, no doubt we will in some way or other, reflect on what it's been like. And uh, I've got a video, one of the videos is now to you, all the videos are on, in Moodle, um, which can look at, well, what do we do after? In this video, we look at what next after we finish our unit. It is now up to you. It is my desire that this unit will help you develop a lifelong interest in improving and growing your skills in analysing financial statements and in allocating scarce capital. This is a skill and interest and for some a passion which will always be needed in our communities. It can also help you to change the way you view business and how you make sense of the financial statements of firms. 
I leave you now with a personal challenge to develop your own tools in your professional and personal business and investing lives. This unit gives you a starting point. This is something useful and not to be underestimated. You never get anywhere unless you start. The journey is yours and can take you a long way further than we have gone together so far. Financial statement analysis requires a mixture of technical skills and judgments. Technical skills can be learnt. Courses, seminars, conversations, working alongside skillful practitioners can all assist us to learn these technical skills. It also requires genuine application and persistence. Genuine interest, even passion, can help us persevere until we reach real proficiency and skill. This means not just learning a few words, a few concepts, or some disconnected facts. It does not mean memorising these things and reproducing them in assessments and being awarded grades. It does not mean getting a degree I can frame and put on the wall. Real proficiency and skill means none of these. It means more than learning imitation accounting or imitation finance. It means more than pretending to be able to analyse a firm's financial statements, either pretending to myself or to others. Mastering the technical skills takes practice. With a degree of perseverance, application and genuine interest and pleasure, these technical skills can be mastered by many people. Becoming good at making sound judgments cannot be learnt quite so readily. It requires some talent, but also action, mistakes, successes and disappointments. It requires working with and getting alongside seasoned and experienced individuals. It involves becoming an active part of a community of practitioners in accounting and finance and in business more generally. In financial statement analysis, judgments need to be made about the past, present and future, and all are difficult. The most important judgments in financial statement analysis relate to the future, and who knows what the future will hold. Yet in allocating scarce capital to competing potential uses, these judgments need to be made. Indeed, these judgments have real effects and real impacts on real people's lives. These judgments need to be made by someone. Why not by you? And why not make these judgments with skill and insight so that you are able to positively contribute to the futures of our communities? Financial statement analysis can help us understand the economic and business realities of firms, but it also empowers us to be able to influence and change these very realities. We can learn to use financial statements and other sources of information to engage with the economic and business realities that involve real resources and real people's lives. Ever wondered why in Australia we have plenty of food, clothing and shelter? Why we have cars and phones and entertainment options, hospitals and medical centres and indeed tertiary institutions? Real, genuine, grinding poverty has been largely, though not totally, eradicated in our country. All aspects of our economy and society have required material resources to be applied to their development and creation in the past. They did not just come out of thin air. Previous generations have left an economic and social legacy for us based partly on how well or how poorly they have allocated capital to competing uses in the past. I sat on the board of the Dressmark Group of Companies for several years with a fellow investor and director, John Bowgen. In 2003, John travelled to almost every country in the world in 167 days. They made it to 191 countries. At that time, there were 193 sovereign nations. They managed to miss two of them quite careless, I thought, but they did manage to make it into the Guinness Book of Records for their efforts. No one in the world has yet been so misguided as to attempt a similar feat. John saw a cross-section of the world. He saw at roughly the same time the nations of the world. He asked a child in each country what their dream was and took their photo. 
He included a number of these photos and dreams in a book, My Dream, Listen to the Children. One thing John mentioned to me on his return from his trip was almost everyone in the world is living in poverty. He saw enormous poverty throughout the world. The economic legacy that billions of people alive today have inherited is one of poverty. Developing skills in financial statement analysis can help us contribute to our whole community and society, not just to ourselves, by becoming truly skillful at allocating scarce capital. This will touch many people's lives. So it's now up to you. The, uh, as you get to the end of the, your degree, the end of your unit as well, you can reflect on what you've learned in the unit, what you've learned in your degree, and it's a good time just sort of open up into the bigger picture of uh, more of the why as well as the what, the personal capabilities that you may be gaining and still need to gain more of as you go forward. So it's up to you. We all take what we get at university and, and in a unit like this, and it's up to what we do with it. So what was this? what has this unit been about? Well, this unit has shown you two frameworks for analyzing firms, the discounted cash flow framework and the economic profit framework. And we've also seen how we can break down the financial statements into bits, that's analysis, and these two frameworks can help us know what to focus on. We can look at the end report, financial statements as I'll leave of information, what do we focus on? And we saw some key accounting drivers profit margin, asset turnover, return on net operating assets, sales and sales growth, net operating assets. And as and we we saw how we can focus on the enterprise and not on the whole, on the company as well. And so we're looking at the operating activities of the firm. So we're focusing on where is it adding value or where is it not adding value? Where is it destroying value? And we saw we didn't just stick to the accounting numbers, what we call the accounting drivers, these key accounting ratios, we went further and many people are still finishing that off. We went further and looked at what, what, what is causing those accounting drivers or those accounting ratios to be the way they are. What's driving run in healthcare's profit margin? What's driving run in healthcare's asset turnover and turn on net operating assets, growth in net operating assets, growth in sales? It's driving that in the real business. And some people have got have found that a much easier process than others, but if that is the key in accounting, to be able to move from the accounting numbers to the business. So you've had a chance to practice and get some experience of doing that. We also looked at learning for understanding. Learning's not about a quantitative increase in knowledge. It is about a quantitative increase in knowledge, but it's about a lot more than that. If all you're picking the formal environments is all you're sort of doing is just chucking facts into your backpack and then probably forgetting them, um, that's not really good enough. You've got to learn for understanding as well. So you've got to do the surface learning, but also the deep learning. You, you've got to engage with the content. You should know, you should know, for example, the definition of an asset fundamental accounting equation. You should know the names of different financial statements and the whole heap of stuff, a huge amount of stuff, but and, and how we account for property plant equipment and all sorts of things. You should have, you should have a, a good grip on that, and that can come too with practice and, and applying, the, applying these concepts. But you need to know more. You need to understand them. You need to understand what accounting is. What is accounting? You need to understand how to use accounting numbers to connect to businesses. These are things you can't Google. You've got to know, these are your capabilities and skills. And that's what people are looking for. Communication skills, critical thinking, problem solving skills, and being able to understand the key technical areas of accounting and being able to use that to give worthwhile advice to clients. And then we looked at going forward and what, it's a good time to reflect at the end of your degree about what you are going to be able to do with what you've learned. What has changed for you? What capabilities are you developing? And what difference will that make to other people? 
Well, thank you very much, everyone. It's been good to work with you this term. All the best as you complete your assignment too, and, uh, and for many as you complete your studies at university. Bye for now. Bye-bye.